Okay, friends. Wait a minute. All right, maybe that's better. I don't know. Hello, friends. Hope you're doing well. As I'm approaching debt freedom, a matter of weeks now, I have found myself reflecting on what got me here. Not only the baby steps and being disciplined and all that, but actually my debt. And not only how little I have to go, but also how far I've come. And so I decided to share these reflections with you as I go through my debt and like the bonehead logic that got me into the debt, the steps that it took to get me out of the debt, and the lessons I've learned, not in that order, maybe not all that stuff, but in today's video, I'm gonna share with you how I obtained and paid off my student loans. So I've taken down some notes because a lot of this information is um, extra. I'm not gonna say old, because then that would date me, but I'm just saying, okay. So here we go, uh, 99, 2000, I was in my senior year of high school, planning on going to college. It was something that had been instilled in me from a very young age is to be educated. And so I knew that I was going to college. And in my junior, senior year, I started to pull together resources to pay for college. You know, my mom, she was obviously a great resource. She connected me with people who would help me understand what it took to pay for college. The FAFSA, if you don't already know, free application for federal student aid. There's an important date associated with the FAFSA that's coming up October 1st is when you can start to apply. Listen to me going into an ad, but it's really important. It's a free application for federal student aid. And this is governmental grants that you don't have to pay back. Uh, your work study, it's based on your income or your parents' income if you depend on them. I want you to really consider looking into the FAFSA. It is the foundation for paying for college, in my opinion. Sometimes people think that they make too much money to qualify for any money through the FAFSA, but try anyway. It is a free application for federal student aid and it's important. FAFSA.ed.gov. If that's not correct, I will leave the website in the video somewhere. But the FAFSA, we would always fill that out. I had a cousin by marriage who had graduated recently at the time from college and she shared a lot of information with me. I was filling out scholarships left and right because I knew in order for me to get through college, to be able to make it to and through it with as little debt as possible, I needed to rely on as much free money as I could possibly get. So I was applying for every scholarship, period. And in my senior class of hundreds of students, I was, if not the most awarded, one of the most awarded students in my senior class because like I said, I did not play, okay? So things were shaping up to look good. I had decided to go to Mars Hill College in the mountains of North Carolina. And the tuition was about, here go my notes, about 14, 15,000 at the time tuition and fees with a meal plan and then room and board that amounted to almost 20,000. That's not including books and other supplies. So you could say it's about 20,000 a year. And so my education cost about $80,000 at least. That number was daunting to a teenager like myself. So I was doing my best to raise as much money as possible. So you're probably wondering then how did you have student loans? We're going to get there. Back in the day, it was customary, and I don't know if that's the same practice today. It was customary that the scholarships and the companies granting the scholarships had to write into the school or either send the money straight to the school so that it could be applied to your education. Now, there were times that at the beginning of the semester, all of that hadn't been done. So it hadn't been sent in or whatnot. So my college would ask that I secure all that money, everything's in by the time I start classes or within a few weeks, like I said, it's, it's been a little, a little while. So forgive me if I misstate, okay? But um, we had to have all the money in. So there were times that I had to take out loans at the beginning of the semester. And then I was cut a check by the time all of my scholarships rolled in over the semester. And then I would have the overage again, in a check made out to me. So you're probably wondering, then why do you have student loans? We're gonna get to that. <laughs> okay, so just so you know what my loans are comprised of, in September of 2000, September 22nd of 2000, I took out a loan for $2,625, and these were loans with Citibank. They were subsidized Stafford loans. So the first loan was $2,625. 
I took out another loan August 14th, 2001. That was $3,221.19. Another loan September 4th of 2002 of $1,777. And then another of $800 on January 29th, 2003. That amounted to $8,423.19. And the interest ranged from 1.82% interest to 2.78% interest. So I had taken out these loans for my education. Again, an $80,000 at least education with $8,400 in student loans. Though I don't think that's terrible, a terrible amount. In a way, I do feel proud of myself for getting as many scholarships as I could. You know, the FAFSA is based on income and I'm just so grateful that my mom also prioritized it. She would let me know as soon as she was filing her tax return so then I could fill out the FAFSA as close to her getting her 1040 as possible. We were really working as a team to help me get through college financially. And again, also my guidance counselor and my cousin, and I had another cousin who gave me hundreds of dollars to pay for school. I mean, it was a group effort. And I am just so grateful to everybody who had a hand in me getting through college with as little cost as possible. Now, on to the reason why I even have student loans to begin with. I was young. I was young. And instead of taking those overage checks, those refund checks, I guess you would say, and putting those towards my student loans, guess what I did? I don't remember, <laughs> but I know I did not use them to pay off my student loans, that I do know. Now I had started getting into some other debt at the time, so maybe I used it to pay down that debt, but I know I did not repay my student loans. I waited all four years, and then of course, you know, six months after graduation, six months after my graduation in 2004, here come the student loan payments. Quick thing, if you notice the sun going in and out, the sun is disappearing behind the tree, so it may get darker or lighter in here, just so you know what's going on. Okay, let's look at some timeline stuff, shall we? In March of 2011, Citibank transferred the loan to Sally Mae, who would ultimately transfer the loan to Navient. Okay, or Sally Mae became Navient. I don't know, at this point, I don't care. December 2012 through most of 2013, I made enough payment to cover the interest payments. And so this must have been whenever I was in forbearance and somebody must have let me know that if you could at least make a payment to cover your interest, that'll be better than paying nothing at all. I was trying to pay enough to cover the interest and that would be like $10 or so just to make sure that after the forbearance ended, then I didn't have that stacked on top of what I already owed. It's interesting, a couple weeks ago, and it's kind of what spawned my idea of sharing these reflections was that I was going through my email, cleaning out old emails, and I saw an email from Sally Mae that said, your forbearance is ending. And I just remember how back in the day when I would get those types of emails, you know, just, I, I feel like how hopeless I felt at times that I just could not afford to, to make the payments and, and really in hindsight, it, it's not that I couldn't afford it. It's just that I hadn't prioritized it and I felt overwhelmed by it. I'm just so thankful that emails like that don't take away my power. They don't make me feel like I'm, I have no hope in a situation. So in November of 2013, I was back to making full payments. And in October of 2014, I was back to another forbearance, only paying the interest. In February of 2015, I was back to making full payments. And a couple months later in April 2015, I was back to making interest payments. So it took me a while to get it together. <laughs> in August of 2015, I was making regular payments. So in April, April 1st of 2016, I paid off that lowest balance loan, which I obtained in 2000. 2003, so that's 13 years later, I paid off that $800 loan. Well, it was paid off. In April of 2017, I paid off that third loan from 2002. In June of 2017 was when I started the baby steps. Baby step one in November 2017 is when I started baby step two. In February of 2018, I paid off that first loan. And on February 23rd of 2018, I paid off that second loan. And all four were knocked out over 13 years later. I finally paid off my student loans. Wow. That's a long time of paying off loans, but at the same time, I just couldn't imagine if the balances were greater, where would things be? If I were to think about lessons learned, I am just, again, grateful for 
methods and institutions set up for young people to be able to uh, apply for whatever free money they can get. You know, where I dropped the ball was in not paying off my student loans when I got those refund checks. Ultimately, I can say I'm grateful. I I'm certainly grateful it's done. Um, just $8,000 just shuffling the same few payments back further and further and further. And I'm grateful that they are done. And now college is not for everybody. But if you decide you're going to go to college, ask your folks to give you their 1040s or whatever tax paperwork to fill out the FAFSA. Even if you get a $2,000 grant, that's better than nothing. And that's better than taking out a $2,000 loan. Try to get as many scholarships as you possibly can get. Again, the FAFSA deadline is coming up October 1st. It's a first come first serve basis. At least that's what I had always been told. Me, my sister, my nephew, we're getting together on October 1st and filling it out for him. Speaking of my nephew, I am just baffled by the amount of student loan paperwork I've received. Now I've received, yes, because in preparing for my nephews to go off to college, if that's what they desire to do, I'm all in with helping them with financial aid. I get at least one student loan offer a week. Sally Mae is in there. Ernest, let's see, Discover Loans. It's crazy and it's also scary to me they're making it real attractive get the money you need for the entire school year get a competitive fixed or variable interest rate they don't know choose from three repayment options get the money you need for all your school certified expenses like tuition fees books housing meals travel and even a laptop Apply with a cosigner. If a parent or other credit worthy individual cosigns the loan with you, it may give you a better chance of approval. And, and all this stuff, it only takes 15 minutes to apply. Look at these rates and then these big old pretty, listen. This is why we need to equip our young people. I know at least with my nephew, I am pulling together resources to help him prepare himself financially for college. I'm gonna share as much of that on this channel as I possibly can. Check in with your parents, see if their bank, their employer, their credit union has a scholarship that you can apply for. Again, I'm starting to get into the preachiness because if you clicked on this video because you're hoping to avoid student loans, I want you to have all this information because you don't have to take out loans are not your only option to pay for college. So that being said, <laughs> I am elated that my student loans are behind me. So as far as my debt story goes and my student loans go, I'm glad that they got knocked out pretty early in the journey. Even though before I started the baby step journey, I had already started to prioritize paying them off. I am just grateful they're done. Let me know in the comments, how long do you have before you pay off your student loans? And let me know in the comments what you would say to encourage a young person who's getting ready for college. What other resources you can think of that could prepare these young people for going to and getting through college. Leave in the comments what you suggest in case that young person is scrolling through the comments looking for some other ideas so we can help these young people do it better than we did it. <laughs> okay, well that's all for this part of my debt story. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.